Hey, do you believe in magic? What about science? Have you ever seen something that seemed like magic, but you learned it was actually science? Like how a lava lamp floats, or how waves sometimes glow, or what a rainbow really is. It's smart to ask questions and figure out how the world works. Magic is a cool thought, but science is so much cooler. We had to come up with magic just to explain how cool science is. Plus, with science, anyone can understand it and do their own experiments. If we can figure out how things work using the scientific method, we can solve problems, come up with new inventions, and create cool science experiments. And we can explain how some things that seem really scary are not scary at all, just science. Today, we are going to read about a scientific fairy who wanted to help save a tree, but she had different ideas about how to save a tree than the rest of the fairies in her class. See if you can make a hypothesis about what the tree needs before Esther does. Fairy Science by Ashley Spires Esther does not believe in magic. This is unusual because Esther is a fairy and fairies are all about magic. They use magic wands and they mix magic potions. Some fairies even make magical fairy dust. Shaboom! Esther is pretty sure that's just dandruff. She is the only fairy in Pixieville who believes in science. Esther prefers facts, data, and hard evidence to wishing on stars. Unfortunately, the only thing they teach in fairy school is magic. Class is very frustrating for Esther. Fairies were born when a drop of rain passed through a rainbow and landed on a flower bud. When the flower bloomed, the first fairy took flight. And for Miss Pellipetal. As you can see from this chart, it is more likely that fairies, as a species, evolved in response to influences such as environment and diet. Esther can't help observing the world differently from everyone else. Where other fairies see a path to hidden gold, Esther sees light and water colliding. Follow the rainbow! The water helps us see all the colors that are hidden in the sunlight. That's dispersion. Where they see a dangerous omen, she sees condensation. When the temperature is just right, droplets are suspended in the air. Where they see faces of the spirits, she sees erosion. Rocks get worn away by water and wind. The faces are just your imagination. I don't think they are listening. Esther can't wait to teach the scientific method to her fairy mates. Ask a question. Do some research to find out more. Make a hypothesis. A fancy word for a guess. Do experiments. Study the results. Draw a conclusion. Eureka! Or you could just do magic. She shows them the periodic table. This is a list of all the elements that make up the whole universe. No, not all of them. Where are dreams and wishes and sunshine? She even demonstrates gravity. Gravity is why things fall down instead of up. But we can go up, so we must be magic. We. They just don't get it. Ping. Whoosh. That was definitely gravity. And there's definitely something wrong with this tree. It's wilting. 
The fairies do their best to help. They cast spells. Alakazoo! They make magic talismans. They even do a mystical moonlight dance. But nothing works. The tree keeps on wilting. Esther asks a question. Why is the tree wilting? She does some research. What I know about trees. One, they have leaves. Two, they have roots. Three, they are pretty. Four, they grow out of dirt. She makes a hypothesis. What does the tree need to grow? One, soil. Two, water. Three, air. Four, hugs. Five, hmm. She tries some experiments. She studies her results. At last, Esther draws a conclusion. Eureka! The tree needs more... Simbalahu, Simbalahi, I'm doing some magic to save this tree. Sun! Now she waits for the sun to do its work. It took a while, but the tree is looking positively perky. She did it! Esther has proven the power of science. At least, she thought she did. Miss Pellypetal, we did it! Magic saved the tree! She might not have changed the other fairies' minds. Hip hip hooray! <sighs> but Esther has inspired some questions. How did you do that? Can you teach us science? And that's where every good scientist starts. Esther's sunbeam experiment. You don't have to be a fairy to do a science experiment. Why not grow your own seedlings at home? You'll need these things. Dried lima beans, a zip seal sandwich bag, a paper towel, and tape. Your beans will grow extra fast if you soak them overnight. First, fold your paper towel in half and then in half again so it makes a square. Next, wet the paper towel. It should be damp but not dripping wet. Place the paper towel in the zip seal bag along with three or four lima beans. Plants need lots of room to grow, so don't add too many beans. Finally, seal up the bag and tape it to a well-lit window. Just like our tree, these plants need sun to grow. Once your experiment is set, make a hypothesis about how long you think it will take the seedlings to grow. This is called germination. Study your results every day to see how your seedlings change and make conclusions about what you see. That's the scientific method. What was your hypothesis? I thought the tree might have needed more water or sun, and it was sun. Do you think you could use the scientific method like Esther did to try and fix a problem or understand how something works? There are so many things that you can use the scientific method on that you might not have thought about, like how to grow plants, or even something like why your tummy aches. This was an experiment I had to do myself when my stomach was hurting every day for a while. It started with an observation, and that was, hey, my stomach hurt all week. Then I did some research. I looked up all the reasons someone could have stomach pains for a whole week. 
And there was a list of things. So I went to the doctor and we worked on the first thing and we ruled it out. So then we went to the next and we thought it might be a food allergy. So I made a hypothesis that my food allergy might be coffee because I drink a lot of coffee. So I experimented. I didn't drink coffee for a whole month to see if it changed my stomach. It didn't. That means we have to try the hypothesis and experiment again. This time, I didn't eat bell peppers, my favorite food that I ate every day. I didn't eat bell peppers for a whole month and my stomach felt better. I was allergic to my favorite food. So now I came to the conclusion that bell peppers hurt my stomach and I'm allergic to them. So now I don't eat bell peppers, which makes me sad, but my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. So all in all, it was a really good science experiment to go through and it really helped me. Something as simple as that, realizing you're sick, wondering why you might be sick, looking it up, and then using that to try and see what things make you feel better is part of the scientific method. And it's as simple as that. Understanding science and being able to use the scientific method is so helpful and important because pretty much everything you use works because of the scientific method. It's how you have electricity to turn on lights and watch TV in your house. It's how your car or bus's engine works to get you places. And it's how doctors can help you understand what's wrong with you or give you medicine that makes you feel better. So today we are going to be doing the science experiment that was in Esther's book. For this experiment, you're going to need lima beans. I wanted to try it with lima beans and plain bird seed, so I have both. You're going to need water to soak your beans overnight, Ziploc bags to put your beans in, paper towels, and tape to tape up your bags. Put your beans in a cup or bowl and pour the water over it, then let it sit overnight. The next morning, take your beans out of the water and place them in the Ziploc bag. Take your paper towel and wet it. Wring it out so that it's damp, not dripping wet. Fold it up and put your paper towel in the bag. Close up your bag and tape it to a sunny window. I don't really have a window that gets a lot of sunlight, so I chose to tape my bags up to my backyard fence that gets a lot of sunlight. You might need to do something like that too. These are my beans and bird seed three days after I soaked them. You can see that the bean cracked open and there's a slit where the arrow is pointing to. Where I circled the beans is where the roots are starting to sprout out of the bean. They look like little tails, but those are the roots and that is the first beginning of our plant. My bird seed grew really well and you can see really long shoots coming off of some of the bird seeds. You can also see one of my bird seeds cracked all the way open. Try and do your own experiment of this at your house. Make a hypothesis. Guess how long you think it will take before your beans or seeds start to sprout. That means when they start to grow little shoots off of them. Check them every day to see how they're changing and how long it takes to happen. Was your hypothesis correct? If they don't grow, you might need to change something in your experiment. Maybe you need to put them in more light or maybe you need to give them more water. Maybe your paper towel wasn't wet enough or you didn't soak them overnight. Or maybe your paper towel was too wet and you need to use less water. See what happens. I hope you had fun with this experiment. I hope you keep growing your beans. You can plant them, water them, give them lots of sun, just like you did in the bag, and they'll grow for you. And I encourage you to do your own scientific experiments and use the scientific method for anything you want this summer. Bye!